Hello there, welcome back to Talking Europe on France 24. Now in this programme we are meeting the man who heads up the body that one European commissioner described as the most important agency in the European Union, its border and coast guard agency known as Frontex. Fabrice Legeri was appointed as executive director in 2015, just as hundreds of thousands of asylum seekers were entering the European Union in the biggest influx ever recorded. Frontex has seen its scope, mandate and budget expand massively since then. In 2014, its annual budget was around 100 million euros. For 2021, it's more than 540 million euros. Well, Frontex also due to hire 8,500 more border and coast guards over the next six years. The final standing corps of 10,000 officers uh, will also be allowed to carry guns. Well, joining us from Warsaw, thanks very much for being our guest, Fabrice Legeri. Hello. Now, there are some very serious claims coming from, for example, the European Home Affairs Commissioner, uh, also from OLAF, the EU's anti-corruption agency, uh, particularly regarding what are called illegal pushbacks of migrants. Uh, just for our viewers, that's uh, when uh, migrants are said to be uh, impelled back into uh, non-EU waters, uh, particularly uh, Turkish waters uh, near Greece. Um, so, uh, Fabrice Legeri, an internal Frontex report has cleared 12 out of 13 specific allegations regarding pushbacks. Uh, they stated that there wasn't clear proof in many of these cases. Does that mean, however, that there is no evidence or that Frontex does not have systems and people that are looking for evidence? No, first of all, uh, well, uh, there were accusations based on videos, and we should uh, also inquire what are these videos, but unfortunately this was not possible. Um, well, claiming that uh, there were uh, illegal so-called pushbacks, so uh, returning um, migrants or returning people uh, in the agency, um, but uh, there was a, um, an investigation that was, mm -hmm. uh, in fact, conducted by the management board of Frontex, and uh, this is something I advocated and invited the management board and the commission to investigate the case. Mm -hmm. uh, we cooperate as, as agency, we cooperated with them. The conclusion was that uh, there is no evidence uh, that um, the Frontex or uh, officers deployed by the member states and the Frontex operation yeah. have participated or covered any illegal uh, pushback uh, in the maritime domain. If I can just interrupt you, um, Mr. Legier, you said that, sorry, can I just interrupt? Sorry. Yes, you, you quite rightly say that the uh, conclusion was that there is no evidence of these illegal pushbacks. But my question is specifically, is Frontex looking for the evidence? Are there people in place? Are operations being filmed? Because, uh, for example, yeah, uh, there were fundamental too. rights officers that were supposed to be hired that were not hired. I will, I will answer this, but let, yeah. let me set the scene with the geopolitical context. And this is also why it's very difficult sometimes to, to have a clear picture of the situation on the ground. First, uh, well, a couple of days ago, there was again uh, Turkish um, Coast Guard vessels ramming on purpose uh, deliberately uh, Greek uh, Coast Guard vessels. So uh, these are unusual situations. Uh, and let's say that the operational context due to geopolitical situation mm -hmm. there is extremely, extremely difficult. Uh -huh. So in some cases, uh, it's very difficult uh, to, to have a clear picture of the situation. Second, what is uh, allowed and this is even enshrined in the EU regulation uh, ruling Frontex maritime operations, when we are not uh, dealing with a search and rescue case, when there is no distress at sea, mm. and if a boat uh, is suspected of being in involved in criminal activities or mm -hmm. the behaviour of the boat is that they want to escape from the controls, then it's uh, legal to intercept uh, that boat, which yeah. means that instruction can be given to a boat not to stay in the territorial waters or not to enter them. And this is what happened in most of the cases that were uh, scrutinized and investigated. So I just want there to ask you the specific question. Please forgive me. I want to ask you the specific yeah. question. Um, of course, that's the, the, the context and the legal situation. It. But I, I, how do you know that this is what is I happening? Will... Are there people who are specifically monitoring this? And is it being filmed, for example? There is there is a there is a, um, a frame to to report incidents. So there are recommendations that were made by by the investigation group uh, to improve uh, recording, for example, uh, of the of the activities mm -hmm. uh, to improve the the 
a reporting system, and I welcome very much this to simplify also the serious incident reports. So this is welcome, and we have already started implementing this, as I reported in February, to, to the management board uh -huh. of, uh, of Frontex. Now, when it comes to the fundamental rights officer, uh, the regulation says that uh, Indeed, uh, end of uh, well December 2020, uh -huh. the agency was expected to have 40 fundamental rights monitors, but uh, this is in fact um, this was delayed because there were uh, lengthy uh, legal discussions um, in the course of 2020. Uh -huh. Because the starting point is first the appointment of the fundamental rights officer yeah. um, that will be uh, the uh, the head of the fundamental rights office, mm. and then the fundamental rights monitors will be recruited. The fundamental rights officer okay. at interim uh -huh. has launched. Uh, the so, recruitment of the fundamental okay. rights money. So the, the hiring so is this happening. Is work in the hiring is happening. Yes, it, Can it, I ask it, briefly, it, do you have a, a date when you expect to have those people in place? Well, uh, the fundamental rights officer at interim told me that uh, beginning of April, uh -huh. uh, she will be able to offer uh, mm -hmm. jobs mm -hmm. to the successful, the mm -hmm. first uh, 15 uh, successful candidates. Just want to ask a question as well about uh, the involvement of member states. As you rightly said, Frontex works alongside member state, coast and border agencies, uh, particularly the Greeks in recent years. Now, you have written to Greek authorities for explanations of some of the incidents and the Greek government has written back uh, denying them. Uh, what happens next? Is there more investigation? Is there a request to national authorities for evidence of their conclusion? Or does Frontex just accept uh, when the government says, no, nothing is wrong? Well... I personally uh, escalated um, some cases to um, high level uh -huh. um, in, in Greece uh, because there were uh, some kind of, uh, let's say, unusual situations. Um, mm -hmm. And there was uh, the assessment that th there was a, a mix of geopolitical situation, maybe uh, security, defense related issues were at stake, but also mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the fundamental rights of my so this is when I escalated personally mm -hmm. some cases to, to the Greek uh, government. But on a daily basis, uh, the incidents which are uh, reported are discussed uh, with all the member states participating in the incident. And That's an sorry, ongoing process. Sure. But just but very specifically, uh, the Greek authorities in this case I'm talking about wrote back and denied that there was a problem to you. What happens next if, if asked, any member state does that? It could be France, asked, Italy or Spain, of course. Well, in, in such a case, um, well, in the cases uh, at stake, I um, asked the uh, Greek authorities to investigate and to report back to me mm -hmm. um, about the, the, the result of the investigation mm -hmm. and clearly saying that this was uh, the suspicion that uh, there was something wrong mm -hmm. in terms of fundamental rights and in particular the, the, the principle of no refoulement. Uh, when two months later, uh, Greek authorities came back with the result and explained that uh, there was no violation of fundamental rights, <clears throat> what is the, 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 then the, the legal uh, powers that have the executive director? There is a possibility which is to suspend uh, or to terminate an operation mm -hmm. uh, when there is uh, the, the, the risk that uh, on, on long term or, or mm -hmm. that there is a persistence risk of violation of fundamental rights. But this is certainly not based on one single particular case. I uh -huh. did suspend uh, our operations in Hungary in January, and this was the consequence of a ruling of the Court of Justice of the European Union mm -hmm. saying that the national law uh, on asylum in Hungary uh, is not in compliance with EU regulations. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. in that case, by design, mm -hmm. uh, the activities related to border control uh, in Hungary uh, might uh, be a persistent violation of fundamental rights because by design it doesn't comply with the EU standards. So this is mm -hmm. what the, the Court of Justice said. So this is just to give an example, uh -huh. what are the possibilities? But, uh -huh. you know, all our operations in 2020 in Greece, they were initiated with the strong support of all member states of the European Union. The uh -huh. three EU institutions uh, visited um, the, the operational area and there was a statement made by all member states uh, proposed by the Commission uh, to support Frontex uh, operations in the agency and at the land border when in March 2020 mm -hmm. Turkey decided to open the border mm -hmm. and, and leave all the migrants 
move to Europe. So that is also the, the geopolitical context. And this is how uh, I decided to launch those operations. So I, uh -huh. I don't know if uh, there would be a majority in Europe saying that I should immediately terminate all operations in Greece. We've talked about how the agency's budget has, has gotten much bigger in recent years. And of course, the number of migrants arriving pre-pandemic uh, has, has risen as well compared to previous decades. Um, you're being asked to raise this standing corps of 10,000 guards. Um, in light of all the questions raised by various bodies, uh, monitoring and transparency compliance issues, is Frontex perhaps growing too quickly for its own structures to be able to cope with? I just want to put to you what one Dutch MEP said, Tineke Strik, uh, member of the Budget Oversight Committee, at the European Parliament, she said, you as executive director are asking for too much more tasks before Frontex is ready. Well, I, I have not requested the task. Uh, and uh, it's simply that, uh, well, that, that there were um, political decisions made um, because of the situation that we faced in 2015, 2016. There was a huge um, migration flow and irregular crossings. Uh, this was a huge political uh, and hot debate in the European Union. And I think that the response, the political response of the European Union, and in particular the Commission at that time, was to beef up from to create the, the standing core, and I think this was the right decision. Fabrice Legeri, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thanks to you as well for watching Talking Europe. Hope to see you very soon.